Live from Seattle, Washington, it's The Cube at Tableau Conference 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Tableau. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for Tableau's User Technology Conference, Data 14, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Jeff Kelly, analyst with our big data group at Wikibon, and our next guest is Scott Barnison, Business Development Manager at Amazon. Um, we'll be at the Amazon reInvent Conference coming up. It's going to be awesome. Great to have you back on theCUBE. Good yeah, to see absolutely. you again. Thanks, John. So, uh, Amazon, Born in the cloud is now the buzzword uh, of, of this year. You know, it's been around for a while, but truly you're seeing the acceleration of, of Amazon's model of um, cloud-based computing with all the integrated stacks, really powering this, the developer market. Mm -hmm. Certainly now, in, even in the enterprise. Yep. People talk about hybrid cloud. At the end of the day, you guys have the model. Um, you're doing some biz dev here at Tableau. Perfect fit for you guys, right? Yep. I mean, come on, you can't beat someone doing visualization, playing with data, and needing resources. So you're here doing some biz dev, shaking hands. Smiling a lot, shaking hands, <laughs> yeah. So the, the relationship with Tableau is an important one for us. Um, they're growing really well. And, and most importantly, if you heard yesterday in the keynote with Christian, you know, he talked a lot about experimentation. And experimentation for us is, is one of our core messages. If you can uh, reduce the friction required to get your hands on the infrastructure so you can try new things, and if you can lower the cost of failure, you'll increase the rate of experimentation. We believe there's a direct correlation between experimentation and invention. Invention's super important uh, for, the, for the history and the lifeblood of companies. So Tableau gives this wonderful view uh, into the customer, right? We have the back-end infrastructure, and they have the view into that infrastructure to extract the value and the insight, so it's, it's very symbiotic. Uh, great partner for us. We're yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the, the, trans, the transformation is obvious, right? So the freemium models for the business on the business side for application developers clearly working. Give someone some some uh, some taste, and they get addicted, or they learn, they use it. Tableau is a great example of that you know perfect example. You guys have that same model. You have one server, S3. Now you got all this other other goodness there in Amazon. So the question I have for you is, how tightly coupled are you guys with Tableau? Because as a user of Amazon, of course we have our crowd chat and our, our backend analytics all running on Amazon. Awesome, awesome service. But I want to push a button yep. and get Tableau. I don't want to have to, I, I don't want to have to do a lot of work. So what are you guys doing to kind of get more tightly coupled with Tableau? Yeah, it's a great question. And, uh, and we've been getting that feedback here at the show. Um, today we, we talk about a couple different stories with Tableau. One is the, the backend integrations to our data services. So you take Tableau desktop on the front end, Pick your data source on the back end, whether it's the relational database service, Elastic MapReduce, Redshift, et cetera, and plug in and get, and get access to the data. The other, the other side of that is running the, uh, the Tableau server on EC2 on the compute service, uh, something that I've heard uh, repeatedly at the show. This is a way for folks to get their, the reports out to the end users in a scalable way uh, at the time when they need it the most. So I think there's a strong story today. We have some technical assets to help people uh, get started and have a good experience. Over time, I think what you'll see is we're going to continue to focus on enabling and empowering the users to do this stuff themselves. Do yeah, and you own. guys had MicroStrategy in the past. We've used that. I'm kind of not a big fan of that because it's too hard to use, but it should be easy. That's the goal, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, going back to experimentation, if you make it too hard, people will give up. Or if, it, if someone needs to stand over your shoulder and do the clicks for you, uh, they, they might not. So. So is there a lot of overlap in terms of customer base between Tableau? How much would you say is uh, Amazon versus non-Amazon? I could say we, we have great success um, without sharing the numbers. You know, we're hearing from a, a bunch of different markets. More than whether 50%? It's <laughs> <laughs> classic, ah, classic. <laughs> yeah, so um, across a number of industries with some great customer stories, we had a, a session here. I don't yeah. know if you guys, I know you're busy here in theCUBE, uh, but from noon to one, we had a great customer uh, telling their story about Tableau on Redshift, so we've been, we've been thrilled with the success so far. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, just mentioned Redshift, of course. I think, I think it's the fastest growing product in AWS history, is that accurate? It is, we, that's, uh, it is the fastest growing service in our history. Um, we are growing pretty fast in general, so mm -hmm. it's, it's been overwhelming, and I think it's really because this is, a, this is a technology that historically has been reserved for the few. 
Mm -hmm. right? So if you reduce the, the, the cost, the investment required to get started and, and democratize access to a data warehouse, the, the count of use cases that are applicable goes up dramatically. So mm -hmm. uh, we're, really, uh, we're really proud of the fact that we're providing more access to more customers and more parts of the organization to solve problems on behalf of customers. So I do want to dig into a little bit more about how Tableau is being applied to things like Redshift, but maybe to just take a little bit of a step back, the whole concept of big data in the cloud. Um, you know, we at Wikibon done a lot of research around this, and we think that's definitely where the market is going uh, yep. for a number of reasons, just abstracting away a lot of that complexity, uh, the underlying complexity of the systems. But in the shorter term, there's challenges, right? There's regulated industries, there's uh, compliance rules in some industries where you can't you know, have your data in the cloud. Um, how do you see this playing out? I mean, is that, are, th are those kind of concerns, um, do, you, do you find that a lot with you know, uh, prospects? They're thinking about it, kicking the tires, they'd like to move, they've got some concerns around regulation, security, privacy. How is that impacting your big data business? Yeah, I think you know, when, we, when we think about big data, it's really across industries, it's across vertical mm -hmm. segments, geographies, and, and the areas where you see uh, some of the, the slower adoption is really, and what we've seen is this is a, a really an education thing. It's a communication thing. So, for example, earlier this year at our summit in New York, we had Siemens on stage, mm -hmm. Siemens being a large, you know, conservative company, launching a diagnostics cloud offering. So this is basically taking uh, medical information from a, from a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. to try to triage and get to the right treatment faster to improve healthcare and the betterment of all mankind. This is the thing that you tell your, uh, your folks over, over dinner so they're happy with you. So, so Siemens is a, a conservative company with a product in a space that's highly regulated, mm -hmm. launching a big data initiative on AWS. So, so let's take them for example. What, how were they able to overcome some of those challenges? Is it just a mindset yep. or, or do they have to do specific things to make this possible? I think it goes back to that com comment around the conversation and the education. Mm -hmm. So as we engage with Siemens to show them, hey, here's the security operations and controls that we have and how we take it as our first priority all the time, as well as really digging in and building subject matter expertise so that we can speak the language mm -hmm. that they're used to hearing. So we have folks in the team that are healthcare centric, they understand the high tech and HIPAA laws and can then translate those requirements through infrastructure architecture diagrams. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's how you can do it. This is the way you can maintain compliance and, and maintain security. So it's a, you know, I think over time, those, those direct engagements and communications, you know, the friction will be reduced as the word gets out, hey, this is a, the, the cloud is open for business for big data of all types. So on the flip side of that, who, who are you seeing, who are your customers that are you know, you know, rapidly adopting the sure. product? What are the industries that are kind of forward thinking uh, around big data in the cloud? It's, it's a good question, and of course we're seeing use cases uh, all across the board. I think some patterns that we're seeing are really around uh, customer behavior analytics, mm -hmm. and that comes in many different forms, whether it's in the gaming world, you know, we talk about Supercell, Nintendo, um, these guys are looking at how users are interacting with games, they're using Redshift on the back end mm -hmm. to do the analytics. Um, Airbnb is using Redshift again when they launch uh, new features to the website, and their business is, right, this, this web app of how do you connect uh, the, the inventory of property with people who need a place to stay, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big data problem, right? So um, that's really a behavior, customer behavior analytics job, and, and one market that's moving really fast. So within gaming, within hospitality, within other sectors, we see that uh, we see that pattern emerge. Although you know the use cases are as diverse as you can get. Yeah, as you there, can there really isn't a, uh, an industry that's not going to be impacted by this. Whether it's you know the example I like to use is agriculture. I mean, you'd think not necessarily a high tech business, but right. absolutely, you see things like uh, companies like John Deere putting sensors on their tractors right. and you do crunching data to help farmers and understand when and where to plant certain crops. And right. it, there's really no vertical that's not going to be impacted. But um, so talk a little bit about the portfolio a little bit. So sure. there's, you've got Redshift, fastest growing service. You've also got uh, Elastic MapReduce, your Hadoop offering. Um, talk a little bit about kind of those two services, how they relate, interact. You're seeing a lot of uses where you know, customers may be using EMR for some of the big data crunching and then moving things into Redshift. What are some of the patterns emerging there? Sure, so you know, one of our fundamental philosophies at AWS and specifically in the data services business is that there is no one tool to rule them all. Right, so we want to give developers uh, and decision makers a variety of tools they can apply appropriately to their requirements and the problem they're trying to solve. So if you start with uh, our own, we have our own services, things like DynamoDB for a, a non-relational database. You mentioned Elastic MapReduce and Redshift. There's also a relational database service. There's a lot of relational databases out there. Yeah, right? they're not going away. They're not going away. Yeah. So uh, we have a managed offering there. 
Uh, and then Kinesis recently launched mm -hmm. our, our streaming service. And then we work with the ecosystem too. You want to work with uh, Elastic MapReduce and run our distribution, that's great. If you want to use uh, folks in, in, the, uh, in the ecosystem like Cloudera, we're happy to have that as well. So we're really trying to give flexibility in order to align the tools with the customer. What's really, really cool, and I've had some great conversations here at the show, is to start seeing those pipelines build together. You know, you might start on the front end with a non-relational database when you need high throughput and low latency, but over time, the economics of that data store erode. The, the, the timeliness of the data is not uh, commensurate with the cost of storing it there, so you, you might move it over to a place like Redshift to do longer term analytics. So I think the, the pipeline that's enabled there is, is a powerful one. Mm -hmm. I know you can't talk about the numbers because uh, you, you won't answer the question, so I'm not going to even ask it. But, uh, Thank you, John. Uh, Andrew Slimhorowitz <laughs> just put out a great post called um, Why Amazon Has No Profit and Why It Works, um, which is a great story, something that we've been tracking. Um, they have you know, three lines of business. This is Amazon, uh, the company. Media, electronics, general merchandise, and other. The other category is growing significantly, the other being AWS. Uh, the other uh, comment in here is about the ma Amazon's the master bundler. Mm -hmm. Bundling stuff has been a key part. Um, can you comment from a product standpoint and a business standpoint as you go out and talk to all the, the Cloudera's, the Horton works, the MapR's, the, the Tableau's, you're doing some biz dev, you want to be in, in good standings with whatever your customers are, are want to use. So clearly you want to bundle all this stuff in. So comment on that other category, Amazon, you guys are obviously doing well, but uh, the bundling specifically. Yeah, so I, I do believe, so let's take big data. We're at a big data conference. Um, there is a value chain that exists, right? From ingest to process to storage to analytics. And we, we're trying to look at that, that value chain in, in, uh, in a way in which we start from the customer. What are they trying to solve? And what bits do they need? What parts of the solution are required in order to derive a solution? So packaging matters. Um, and we look to both the, the technology partner ecosystem, the software providers you mentioned, but also on the consulting partner side. There's a lot of folks who need help to get this stuff implemented, and they may be the ones that are putting the right pieces together in that final package and solution and delivering it. So to bundling the is part of. You guys are a bundle, basically. I, I think I think people want solutions. Yeah, customers which are want bundled, solutions packaged, which in are the cloud. In the right? cloud, so you can rent an, <laughs> you can rent a server by the hour. I'm to get to the bundled in the cloud, but that but that's what people want. They want to pay by the drink, and have whatever they need to work right. That's right. Um, talk about Kinesis, any updates there uh, in terms of success? Obviously Redshift we love, big, big fans of what you guys announced uh, yeah. at the last reInvent. Really closes the loop on the stack side. The integrated stack has proven to be a great winning formula for you guys. Yeah. Talk about Kinesis and give us an update on uh, successes, any stats or any kind yeah, of data. Yeah, uh, no, no stats or numbers to share. I'll tell you that Kinesis is, uh, is very much a developer focused offering today and we're still um, every day getting new stories of ways people are taking this uh, effectively, you know, giant pipe that could stream any number of data sources to any number of endpoints and doing interesting things with it. So I think you'll, you'll hear more about that at reInvent, I can guarantee you. Uh, <laughs> some really good stories and good customers. But you're good, I'm telling you, you got the good message. Mary's trained you well <laughs> on the uh, media training. I like my job. But, but can, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, we know the culture over there. Um, uh, we, we love the culture, but let's talk about the Kinesis. I think sure. that's a great example. We're hearing the same kinds of things at Tableau, this fast experimentation kind of concept. That's right. My take on what you just said was, look it, it's a cool tech, it's getting great reviews. People, we don't really know yet the full magnitude of what this could be. Is that kind of... Uh, I think that's true in general of, of how AWS has gone to market. You know, if you go back to the very early days and the decision, should we be building real offerings that are packaged in a box versus primitives charged for on the most granular basis we can support. We chose option B because we believe customers will decide how best to put these things together. Whereas if, you know, and, and by and definition, Andy, Andy didn't that have means- a big budget either. <laughs> <laughs> but that was with the building blocks, right? You start with computing right. and, and storage, that's basic. And then you guys are adding more and more building blocks. That slide is getting crowded. <laughs> the slide is crowded. <laughs> okay, so we're looking forward to some updates. What other um, pre-show, um, data can you share with us for a reInvent? What, what's, the, what's the drum beat going into so the I think show? Like? If you, if you, let's take this from a, from a historical perspective. I think you've seen a trend where we've launched a number of services that are more focused on the enterprise. We've done a lot of talking about the enterprise this year. Um, many folks, in, you know, ourselves included, as well as the community are showing, this is the year where enterprise goes mainstream in the cloud. So things like workspaces, as an example, uh, and some of the integrations around there, Zocalo for, uh, for collaboration and file sharing. So a lot of enterprise offerings, 
baked into AWS hitting the market this year, uh, you can expect that, that trend to continue, simply because that's where the customers are pulling us. So let's talk a little bit about Tableau. So, you know, one of the two, two areas I was really interested to, to hear about leading up to this week were their announcements around cloud and mobile from, from, from Tableau's perspective. Yep. Um, you know, my, my analysis was that Tableau is a little behind the curve when it came to cloud um, and mobile. So I was really excited to hear about the Project Elastic uh, announcement yesterday. But, but how, do, how do you grade Tableau on their cloud and mobile approach? Um, obviously, the, the BI visualization space is getting very crowded with startups that are mm. cloud first or mobile first or mobile only. Um, so they've got competitors coming from, from that end of the market as well as they've got the old guard that are trying to adapt. Um, how would you grade Tableau in terms of their cloud uh, approach and their mobile approach? So um, I, when I look at the, the strategy that Tableau has taken, it's really about getting the tool in the hands of users, listening to, to what they have to say. And, and I think there's a group of users that are looking for more cloud-first technology, more cloud-first uh, functionality. Um, there's a segment of the market that really wants that. They don't want any, anything to do with the underlying infrastructure, right? Um, and so I think over time, if that, if that group gets louder, mm -hmm. you'll see more and more uh, from, the pro from a product perspective from Tableau. But today, you know, taking Tableau online and having a direct live connection to Redshift, I think is a big step. And that unlocks a lot of power and value for a number of use cases for customers. Um, on the mobile side, you know, it's funny, we talk, this is a big data show, but at the same time, you know, what isn't big data anymore, right? And, and mobile and connected devices, and uh, th this, is a, this is about data generation, and then data generation just becomes a burden unless you can do something with it. So analytics becomes a, a really important story. So it's, it's, for them, I think rapid prototyping as well as seeing the value of, uh, of the visualizations in mobile is important but I think there's a lot more. Well, we'll, keep, more we'll keep pumping ourselves up and by saying that we coined the term data first because you know, cloud first, you know, mobile first was a big buzzword, then cloud first, and even Microsoft adopted that. I think you guys coined cloud first, first, first. Um, <laughs> and now, but, but data first is something that David and Vellante and Jeff and I have been talking about because data is native, so it's not, I don't think there is a big data conference anymore. I think it's, this isn't more an application conference. Yeah. You think about software in the cloud, if you, if you will. Um, but data isn't everything, right? So it's not, you can't really peg the data market, sure. right? It's That's like right. fast data, little data, uh, internet of things. So I think it's pretty clear. Um, has the internet of things and, and these new big data, or new data uh, areas uh, opening up propelled Redshift more? I mean, Redshift seems like a great fit for the internet of things kind of things. Obviously drop. Dropcam, uh, who we interviewed at reInvent, so awesome, and then seeing the acquisition, um, was not a camera company, it was a cloud company. Right. I mean, they built, they innovated with Glacier and storage, some really badass process to create a great pricing structure. Right. I mean, no one figured that out. The founder said, I couldn't get funding. He almost went out of business. But then he, then he ended up crossing over. That innovation was in Amazon. Right. Yeah, that, I think, I think when, you, when you look at uh, Internet of Things or connected devices, what you need is ubiquitous connectivity, a place to store the data, and then compute power to do something with it. So it's a natural fit for the cloud. And I think also, because of where we are in the phase of maturity with IoT and connected devices, there's a lot of experimentation happening right now. People are trying to figure out what is the right way to do this. Mm -hmm. And to do this with purely an operating cost and a low one and a low risk uh, of failure, uh, it's just a natural fit, so I think we'll yeah. continue to see. And I think just, you know, just kind of to talk about some of the things that we experienced with you guys, just to share for the audience here more data about what we've done, is that we've had a similar ex experience with, like Dropcam, with our crowd chat app. Uh, I was talking to a venture capitalist, they're like, it's a, just a chat application. I can put a database together, and I can do that in a, in a second. I go, no, no, you don't understand. It's not a chat engine, it's a DevOps play. Right. And they're like, it's a DevOps play. I thought it was a big data play. No, but it's in the cloud because it's horizontally scale. So when they see that level of large scale engineering, they go, oh, I get it. I can see the big picture now. Right. So what things can you share along those lines, similar use cases where, wow, the innovation is not so much what you're looking at, it's in the cloud? Yeah, I mean, this is a, that's a great question and a, and a long list. I'll take the, uh, the example the from our session here today. So UBM's big, uh, event organizer, one of the largest event organizers in the world, and they're responsible for figuring out who goes to the Black Hat Security Conference mm -hmm. every year. Okay, it's highly coveted, invite only. Um, so they turned to Redshift, they put all this data in Redshift, 
and they started slicing it to figure out what is our profile of person that we should bring to Black Hat this year, and then how do we actually communicate to those folks and get them to come. So uh, that's a, that is a uh, kind of cloud-first strategy, data-centric, you know, using analytics to better understand you know, what is the profile, what is the customer, how do we get the right people in a room. So kind of an interesting story, mm -hmm. and, uh, and one that's using both Tableau and, and Redshift. Okay, to summarize then, we learned that you're here doing biz dev with Tableau, great partner, great fit, obviously, we agree with that. Two, the drum beat leading up to reInvent is going to be enterprise, and just business as usual for Amazon, right? You know, we, we, we're, we're iterating <laughs> as fast as we can. You know, Redshift is. You guys always add new stuff. I mean, you guys, yeah. you guys are always adding new products. Um, I'm, expe I'm expecting to see more new stuff uh, at the show. You can expect to see more stuff at the show. <laughs> Good, confirm, <laughs> confirm. We're going to see new stuff at the show. Um, uh, any, anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, I think one thing for folks uh, who are interested in Tableau and trying to understand what this cloud thing is all about, we, we do have a program we call Test Drive, which is basically a disposable environment with no risk, no cost for people to play around with Tableau connected to Redshift and some sample data. So if you had aws.amazon.com slash test drive, there's a Tableau uh, offer in there. And um, aws.com slash what? aws.amazon.com slash test drive. Um, It'd be a great opportunity for those who are in the community mm -hmm. trying to understand what this means for them to get their hands on the keyboard and try it out. So risk-free for what, Tableau on Amazon? Tableau on Redshift. Okay. One question I meant to ask you. Um, help me understand, help our audience understand, the, you've got the, I think the Redshift, we think we understand, but what are you seeing in terms of the usage of EMR and Hadoop uh, in your, uh, among your customers? Um, are there some use cases emerging? Is it still mostly test and dev and POCs, what are you seeing there? It's, same, uh, it's the same story. Mm -hmm. Very broad range of use cases, some long running clusters with very uh, uh, predictable analytic jobs, you know, you're running the same types of jobs every day. Mm -hmm. um, others that are pure experimentation, it's all over the map. We've got some great enterprise customers that are using EMR as part of their core analytic workflow. Uh, FINRA is one that we talk about publicly. So, you know, some really good stories out there, and I think that's the way in which we try to, you know, communicate to the market that this is, there's others doing this. Um, there are ways to find success at the same time. You know, we want to help them find the right tool for the job, so. Okay, Scott, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you Absolutely. at the show. This is theCUBE live in Seattle, the Tableau User Technology Conference, Data 14, hashtag Data 14. I'm John Furrier, Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>